Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to do a Harry Lemire fly called the Squirrel and Teal. I've been a fan of uh, Harry's flies because he his flies sort of fit with the way I like to tie flies for uh, steelhead around in the Great Lakes in that they tend to be a little bit more tilted towards uh, naturals and, and away from tractor patterns. I do use the tractor patterns, don't get me wrong. I mean, obviously I've got videos on them. But, you know, my natural in in uh, inclination is go towards something of natural colors and natural appearance. And I, I find they're very, very effective for steelhead. And, and I just like using them. I mean, even if I'm not catching fish on them, I kind of like, like them. So this one is very natural looking fly. It's kind of nymphish, if you want to think of it that way. And there is one element I'll talk about at the beginning. Uh, the original calls for jungle cock as an option. Uh, other flies I've done as well call for jungle cock as an optional add-on. I don't put them on the flies in this series, even though I have jungle cock and I do use them on my own flies. Um, it's expensive. So I didn't want to create a series uh, with jungle cock and, you know, people feeling they have to go out and spend a hundred and hundred fifty bucks on a cape. Um, so I leave them off for this series, but by all means you can put it on this fly. Uh, the only difference is I'm going to be tying a, a full collar with the hackle and the recommendation is if you go with jungle cock you just tie on a throat. That's about the only difference. Anyway, let's get started in looking at the material. The hook today is a Daiichi, uh, Alec Jackson spay hook in a size 5. The thread is a, a, a uni 6 aught. We're going to be putting some dubbing on and I do like uni thread for using dubbing. The tag is a, a medium gold oval. Our tail is golden pheasant breast. We're going to use a, a gray dubbing for uh, our body. Our hackle is going to be blue done. And the wing is going to be composed of two parts. We're going to use squirrel tail. Well, this one's getting picked over as well. And we're going to use some teal. Hence the name squirrel and teal. So, let's get started. Now, this fly uh, is being a dub body, so we don't have to get real fancy with the uh, winding the thread on. So let's tie in our tag and rib. Just make sure that's underneath. Bring the thread forward out of the way. Okay, now just fold it back and trap it, because that allows us to use it as a rib. Now, a couple of things about Golden Pheasant Crest. Uh, if I was tying a work of art, I'd want a, a, a crest feather that had the barbs nice, uh, straight curve. I say straight curve. A uh, curve without a corkscrew in it, basically. It curves only one direction. Uh, the feather I pulled off here has a compound curve to it, a bit of a corkscrew. I'm tying a fishing fly, I don't care about that. It's going in this way. Uh, if I was tying a work of art, I'd go carefully through and find ones without that corkscrew twist to it. Also, when I pull them off, I pull off the full feather. I don't try to trim it. It allows us to keep control of the, uh, the feather as we're tying it in. So what I do is I tie it in with a, a couple of loose wraps and then pull it into position, and that's about right, right there. And then a couple of tight wraps to hold it, and then trim it. So that one worked out rather well. It's got a bit of a splay to it, you know, and from a fishing perspective, that's good. I mean, from a, an artistic perspective, no, I wouldn't like that. But, you know, for fishing, yeah, I want that splay. It moves things around. Okay, now we're going to get on to the dubbing. We're going to use a gray dubbing here. A 
This is rabbit. Uh, the pattern just calls for gray. So use whatever you have handy. I'm going to get it, start the dubbing at the back. There you notice I'm not using any dubbing wax this time. I often do use dubbing wax, but um, I find with rabbit, I can, even with my dry fingers, I can usually get it to stay on okay. Okay, there's our dub body. You can see I've given it a slight taper, making it a bit thicker at the front which is similar to the original. Now we'll put on our rib. Come round underneath, put one turn at the back, be careful not to move your tail, then come forward. Keep it underneath, wrap it off. Okay, I've prepared a feather here. I've taken off one side and I've left myself a little tying in point. Just make sure you wind your hackle each pass in front of the previous. Start to move forward, just stroke them back. There we go. And keep the, the quill underneath. Now this one may not break off. There we go, got it. That one was a little thick, okay. Wind it back a little bit, try to give us room for the wing, and also to make that hackle sit back. Okay, we're going to use a, a, a teal feather and the squirrel mixed together. So what we first have to do is cut off a little bit of Squirrel, and not too much, keep it sparse. Put that on the table, pull off some barbs, put it on the tip, match them together, make sure the lengths are right, and then roll them together to mix them up. So first the squirrel, and I'm not taking much here. As per usual, let's get rid of the short bits. Now, I'm not stacking this. I could if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it unstacked. I, I like the tapering. Now I'm going to pull off some barbs from the teal. I'm just going to roll those around a little bit, even the tips up. I want them to separate. Now I'll match that up with my squirrel. Try to pick the whole lot up together, roll that around, separate those teal barbs as much as you can. If you have, if they're not mixing up, separate the teal barbs, like I'm doing right now. This is going to look ragged, and that's the intent. You want this thing to move. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we're going to put the wing about halfway along the tail. And I'm just going to pull up on that. Let's 
come in and trim that off. And we're finished. Now, before we put any head cement on, I'm going to take a toothbrush and comb this wing out. Try and separate all the barbs. Give it a more ragged appearance. There we go. And my teal's gone a little bit to one side, but there we go. We'll work that out. So that gives you an idea what this thing is going to look like when it fishes in the water. There we go. That's what the effect we're looking for. All that teal mixed in with the squirrel. Uh, the teal barbs separated so they're not stuck together. And everything's going to flow beautifully in the current. So finally, let's get some head cement on this. Okay, there we go. Harry Lemire's squirrel and teal. I think it's going to be a great fishing flying. I'll look forward to fishing this beastie. I think this is going to do really well in our local rivers. Uh, that uh, mixed uh, wing is going to really flutter around. You know, there's some subtlety to this pa uh, pattern. It's not in your face. I think it'll be a great pattern when you're trying to uh, um, run a fly over fish that have seen a lot of flies already. And uh, also, I think another thing we don't think of too much, uh, at least in our river, because of the way the, uh, the seasons are scheduled. But I think it'd be a great spring pattern when the fish are busy feeding on the way back to the lakes, uh, and they're taking anything that looks buggy. So you know, this would be, I think, a great, great uh, spring pattern. So give us some thought. Cheers.